The following is a Goulash Media production. Goulashmedia.net. Welcome to the system is down. question of the day is how much is enough how much is too much is there such a thing as too much should you ever feel bad about everything that you have when there are people in the world with literally nothing to their name and you have more in every single room individually in your house than they will ever see in their lifetime is there a line where you should start to feel bad about that And I'm not implying anything. I'm not saying you should. I'm not giving an opinion. I'm genuinely asking your thoughts. Is there a line? Is there a level? How much is too much? How far should you pile things on before you start to feel bad? I don't know. Let me know. What's up, Downers? Welcome back to the very least comfortable show on the web, the place where we talk about all the uncomfortable topics in a civil manner, all the things that make you triggered all the politically incorrect things, the things that we're probably not going to be allowed to talk about in 15 to 20 years. But until then, we will press on. If you're new here, thank you for coming and listening to the show and go find the person who invited you and tell them I love you. Tell them I love them too, because I do. I I, I very much appreciate you being here and I appreciate the person who told you to be here. And if you're one of the Many, many people that listen to the show every single Monday morning for your weekly dose of discomfort. Thanks for returning. Today's episode is my second conversation with the great Gret Glyer. Triple G, that's fun to say. Um, I talked to him the first time way, way back in the early days of the show. I think it was way back to episode eight. I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure I bring it up in the conversation, and that's probably accurate if, if I'm saying it differently now. Listen to that one. But... Uh, back in episode, I believe, eight, we talked about his company. Uh, he is the CEO and the creator of Donor C, and it's a company, it's probably my favorite company in the whole world, to be totally honest. He's doing a revolutionary work, and I, I know that sounds extreme, but I can't support him enough, and he's kind of changed my life and uh, made it really easy for me to be a better person. And we'll get into that a little bit in the episode. Uh, We gave a brief overview of what the company is. Um, If you want to hear the full story, go back to episode eight. But we also talked about the state of America and the cushiness of our society and whether that is a good or bad thing and much, much more. And we're going to get into that in just about 27 and a half seconds. I'm going to give a quick plug here. So go ahead and skip ahead like you always do. Hit that 15 seconds forward button. And I'll wait. I'll wait so you don't miss it. (laughs) We're still here. I I haven't given it yet. If you're not already a member of the Downers Club, that is the place where you can get much more audio and video content, extended interviews, extra shows. We cover the news. We cover movie reviews and TV reviews. And I give rants about the things in the world that I hate And much, much more. And it is what keeps the show going. It's what keeps the show getting bigger and better. I am investing every single dollar that you give back into making this show the best it can be. So go get into the Downers Club and become a part of something bigger than yourself. Become my boss, basically. And uh, you can do that by going to patreon.com forward slash the system is down and signing up for as little as $5 a month. That's all I'm going to say. As little as a cup of coffee a month. That's it. Moving on. Uh, Here's my conversation with the amazing, world-changing Gret Glyer of Donor C. Let's get weird. My guest today is repeat offender and friend of the show, entrepreneur, CEO of one of my favorite companies, an all-around fascinating individual, Gret Glyer. Gret, welcome back to the show. And how the hell are you, man? It's a pleasure to be back, and I'm doing great, not least of which because I'm hanging out with you. Absolutely. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you are the the founder, creator of Donor C. Um, a lot of people heard us talk about it. You've been on, you were on back in episode eight. We, ta- we gave like the rundown of the company and all that, how it functions, where it came from. If people want to get the in-depth backstory, they can go check that out uh, again in episode eight at tsidpod.com. 
Um, but yeah, go ahead and give for the new listeners, just give like the brief synopsis of what donor C is. Sure. Donor C is a way for donors to see where their money goes when they donate. So if you would like to donate to a little girl in India who is deaf and needs hearing aids, you can donate to her. And a few days later, you'll get a video follow up from that girl uh, hearing for the first time. So you'll get video updates on whatever it is that you gift to, not just hearing aids, but all sorts of stuff. Right. And how does that differ from uh, the other donation companies? Um, well, the other ways, the other, uh, usually when you give to pretty much any other organization, you get a thank you email and that's about it. Sometimes uh, 18 months later or 12 months later, you'll get some kind of text update. Maybe if you're lucky, a, a photo update. But for us, it's a few days after and it's a video update, often saying like thanking you by name personally. Mm -hmm. So yeah. for example, I think I saw you were using Donercy either, it was either today or yesterday. Um, and I'm sure that you'll get some video follow-ups from some of the people you help saying, Dan, thank you so much for helping me, you know, get back on my feet or whatever it is that, that you were helping out with. Absolutely. Yeah. I think it's an amazing platform. Um, I've got some questions, uh, on it that we'll get into here in a bit, but yeah, I've basically, <laughs> I've, I, I, I believe in tithe. I believe that there's value in giving, uh, but I, I don't give to my church anymore. I do support my church and give them a lot of my time mm -hmm. and resources, but all of my money actually goes to Donor C right now. Um, so well, much so that, my, that yeah. <laughs> so much so that my bank uh, from time to time will call me and be like, "Did somebody? You know, we saw some charges <laughs> online that were a little high." Right. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, I, I think that somebody stole my card number and they're using them to donate to donors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know that's the strangest thing. Whenever banks, because what people do, and, and this is actually a pretty common behavior, uh, like user behavior, when mm -hmm. people come, usually when you go to like a charity website, you you go and you donate to something. And that's it. And you don't come back for seven, eight months or whatever. But on Donorcy, people give like, in some cases, several times in one session, like five, yeah. 10 times in one session. And so banks sometimes are like, why, are, why is there so much money going to, to <laughs> the same platform over and over and over again? So anyways, right. it, yeah, it's, it's, it's a nice problem to have. Sure. Absolutely. So uh, after the last episode that we did, well, the last episode was titled uh, Gret Glyer Saves the World. Uh, with Donor C, and it had a picture of your face that I made imposed onto Bill Nye's body for I Bill Nye so Saves much. the World. I used that as my Twitter <laughs> avatar for a while. That's good. Um, <laughs> I did see, I don't remember where I saw it, but somebody commented on, they, they were like, oh, you're getting a little bit of a swollen head there, don't you think? Like, they thought <laughs> you made it. So did you get much pushback over, over I that? I guess so. I mean, people always have opinions about everything. It's like, it's a fun little image, you know? Right. I, I was like, whatever. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I'm literally, I spend my, like, my working hours, my, basically all of my waking hours, like working on helping people in extreme poverty. Mm -hmm. And if people think I'm doing it for ulterior motives, it's like at the end of the day, what am I going to do to change their mind? Like right. what could I possibly do beyond what I'm already doing to let them know <laughs> that I'm genuine? Right. Absolutely. So like, where's the company at now? Like, where have you guys come? What are some of the hurdles that you've overcome? I, I know that, I think we talked about, you had some government pushback or government hurdles that you were dealing with last time. Like what's yes. the update on that stuff? Sure. So the, probably the last time we talked, the government uh, hurdles were that was that the Peace Corps wasn't letting their volunteers use our app um, to post projects. And they're still not letting us do that. And um, for the moment, we've just like let that go until we can that we there's a long term plan to fix it, but not a short term plan. Sure. Um, and then the other uh, the other kind of difficulty that we've had uh, lately is Apple has this is this is um, OK, so see if you can follow along. <laughs> Apple recently introduced Apple Pay and mm -hmm. they want people to use Apple Pay. And they, one of the ways that they're doing that is they're forcing charities to use Apple Pay. The problem is Apple Pay does, when, when, they, when they have apps on, on the iTunes store, okay? Mm -hmm. So the problem is the way that our structure works where we send money directly to people overseas, um, Apple Pay doesn't offer that functionality. And so donors see literally can't use Apple Pay for our transactions. And so they're not letting us update our app. Um, hmm. until we either update to Apple Pay or, or go outside of, um, outside of the app to make donations. And so we're working on a way to fix that, but we have this glitch in, if you have iOS 11, we have this glitch in the app and we're not able to fix it for our users hmm. um, because Apple just won't let us because they want us using Apple Pay. 
yeah. which is which is a frustrating thing for like <laughs> it's hard to figure out which one I'm more mad about the Peace Corps thing or the Apple Pay thing. But <laughs> um, but those are the two things. So, anyways, those are two little bumps in the road. You always have stuff like that as you're growing an organization. Um, but we've had so many good things happen that I you know I don't want to comp- I don't want to complain too much about that stuff. So um, for example, uh, one of the things that uh, one of the things that's been nice is I've, I'm frequently invited to talk on different podcasts and that's gotten us a lot of exposure. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, uh, right. I was on the Tom Woods podcast right after we launched an investment campaign. And our goal was to raise uh, about a hundred thousand dollars over the course of six months. Mm-hmm. Um, and a combination of a, a whole bunch of different things. One was being on the Tom Woods podcast. One was, um, just having a, a loyal and dedicated user base. One was um, how the algorithms work on this fundraising site. We actually ended up raising the $100,000 in about two weeks. Um, really? So we just totally beat out our goal. And so anyways, now we're, uh, we're using that funding to make all sorts of uh, updates to the site, the biggest of which is we're really working on boosting the credibility of the site. We want people, the people who are posting projects on our site are amazing people who have been using, who have been helping the poor in their respective countries for um, five, 10, 20 years. And we want more people to know about that and to signal that right when they land on the page. And so um, we're working on different mechanisms to do that. And then uh, soon we'll be, um, we'll be raising another round of funding uh, through this investment platform. Yeah, that actually addresses one of the questions that I had for you. Um, as far as like checks and balances on who's allowed to post projects and who's not. And do you actually follow up? I mean, how closely do you keep an eye on them to make sure the money is actually going where they're saying it's going? Yeah. Great question. So I, there's, um, there was a time when we, we were more lenient with who we allowed to post. Um, and as we, uh, but, and we kept a, we still kept like a tight leash. Like we allowed people to post, but then we would like check to see, um, we, we would follow up with them and figure out if we had relayed contacts and so forth. Um, mm-hmm. After a while, that became unmanageable. And so we had like a reset. And I don't think anything bad happened. It was just that um, it was just that it became from our for donorcy as an organization, we had to make sure that we were like we were in the clear completely. Sure. Um, and so we didn't want to, we didn't, we saw the potential for things to get out of hand, even though that, even though they didn't to our knowledge. So, um, so we just like really reined things in and we, uh, at this point we have like a very small group of core project posters that we keep in contact with and we have, and we're able to keep an eye on them. Um, a lot of them, a lot of them come from our, uh, relationship with an organization called the world race, which has been mm-hmm. doing, they've been doing short term mission trips for like the last 25 years and um, they have contacts all over the world. So we, we work with those partnerships to keep an eye on stuff. But with that said, don't at the scale that donor C is right now, that works just fine. But mm-hmm. I want donor C to be a household name. I want everyone to have the experience of being able to help people and feel good about changing someone's life. And um, in order to do that, we have to scale up and we'll, we have, we have to come up with mechanisms to, um, t- for the crowd and for our users to hold people accountable instead of just us doing it all the time. And so right. we're working on building those features right now as we scale. So for the moment we're, we're a, uh, we're at a, a level where we can keep track of things fairly easily. Um, as we get bigger, that's like the key problem to solve. Gotcha. Yeah. I noticed that, uh, the amount of projects that are in there to donate to have gone down substantially. Is that just a result of that cracking down that you're talking about? Um, well the, that is a result of having way too many donors. You could say I, we have, we just have, sounds our like projects. a good problem. <laughs> it is. Yeah. What's happening right now is that, um, because yeah, because we are only allowing a handful of people to, um, fundraise through our site, uh, because of that, the number of donors like far outweighs the number of people posting projects. And so we get, we, we have this kind of like repeat cycle where people post projects and then they just get flooded with donations. And then, okay, so there's still projects left over and, and a few more projects get posted, but we just can't keep up with the demand for donations. Sure. And yeah, it's a good problem to have, like you said. Um, but we're trying to, and, and it's, it's tough for me. There's all sorts of things that are, as the CEO of the company, you always see things that are like not optimal and you want to, you want to address them. For example, like the iOS update, like it would, I would love to just like fix this one little glitch and, and I just have to like let it sit there for a while until it's the right time to fix it. So, um, yeah, anyways, as we, uh, at, we're waiting for, we, we, we are making sure that the appropriate steps are taken first before we address some of these problems. So it's, it's just a really important way to do it, to do it. Absolutely. Now, with um, uh, there there have been circumstances like different projects that I've donated to where it's like a starving child needing uh, 
food and shelter and everything. Um, there's been a couple instances where that child has died after and uh, like it, it didn't work out. What happens to the money in that case? Um, mm-hmm. I, I know that one of them, I believe they, they it might, it might have been both of them. I have a hard time following up on that stuff, mm-hmm. which yeah, sure. I mean, that that's the point of the the platform and i think it's great that i can but i I don't keep up on most of the things but let me um, just uh, address that real quick so there's sure you're it's like there are two types of people there are people who give and then wait for the follow-up they watch it they give again (laughs) and that's that's like one type of user the other type of user just gives and gives and gives and then they just like knowing that there is the documentation there even though they might not watch it or whatever so it just depends on who you are and how you want to do anyways so that's a a pretty common thing that that we see so anyways you were saying sure sure yeah and i i've paid attention to some of them i've seen that one of them said that they gave it to or the finances were going to somebody else in need or something to that effect which i totally approve of it's totally fine (laughs) i I don't have buyer's remorse because a child died but um are there (laughs) i don't (laughs) that's good (laughs) Very understanding of you. <laughs> do they all do they all come back and say, you know, this is what happened? Here's that. Like, mm-hmm. do they are they pretty faithful on that type of thing? Yeah. So they are. Uh, in unfortunately, the um the situation where like a, a child passes away or something. I mean, we're we're dealing with like the poorest people on the planet. So mm-hmm. unfortunately, it's more common than you would think. Um, usually they and they. I've, I've, I'm, I'm not aware of a situation where something bad happened and it wasn't reported back on. And usually, it's like the the thing is. Um, the money goes to like funeral expenses because funerals Mm -hmm. are more expensive in these parts of the world than what the people can normally afford. So that's usually what it goes to. But what I will say to that is um, we just launched a feature like three days ago where there's a series of nine questions that all storytellers can answer. And one of the questions is what happens if a project doesn't go as expected? Mm -hmm. Um, And so, and so the, it's hard for me to give a specific answer because each storyteller is living in a different part of the world with, a, with different cultural customs and blah, blah, blah. So if, if you want to find out the specific answer for the people that you're giving to, most of the people that you give to will address that specifically for their uh, context. Gotcha. Very cool. Now, uh, I was telling uh, somebody else about your, your business and everything and the differences between you guys and the others uh, and your competition, quote unquote. Um, and they're, uh, of course, you know, the main question is like, well, w- like, how do they profit from this? Like, what, where's their money coming from? Are you willing to like kind of get into the numbers of how the back end of things work and how you Absolutely. are paid? Yep. Sure. And if you go to about.donorcy.com, all that stuff is there. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, the basic way that we, the basic way that it works is um, on average, Donorcy gets about a 3.75% cut from every donation. Um, and so it fluctuates based on Which is about the uh, same as any like payment company like PayPal or anything like that, right? Um, yeah, well, and and uh, like GoFundMe, they take five percent. Uh, mm-hmm. Kickstarter takes five percent. Um, so we're uh, it. It just depends on which one you're using. Um, sure. But so there's we take a three point seven five percent cut, and then there's like a credit card fee on top of that. But ours ours fluctuates based on like the amount of the credit card fee and the amount of the donation and stuff. But on average, what we're prof- profiting from, I mean, like our you have to think about how much volume you have to do to mm-hmm. profit from 3.75%. But so it's like what we're, that money is almost or is entirely being used to like upkeep the platform and, and go to uh, paying people to write the code and do the mm-hmm. marketing and all that stuff. As a CEO, I get zero money from it. I don't get, I don't get paid at all. So um, it's really? just, yeah, all that money goes entirely to helping it, all that goes entirely to helping the platform, making it better. And then um, the vast, vast, vast majority of donations go to uh, the, the person in need. Sure. Absolutely. So, so how do you personally make money? Um, well, I do, I have a Patreon that people support. And so I'm, I'm grateful to have people. So anyways, I like, I like doing it that way because then people can support me directly and they sure. can, they, it's like completely out there and transparent out in the open. Um, right. And then, I also do a little bit of uh, like consulting work and speaking engagements and stuff like that on the side. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, my, my hope would be just full time. Do I mean, I, I do, I spend more than 40 hours a week on, on donor C easily, but mm-hmm. my, my hope is that I can give my full hundred percent attention to donor C once my Patreon gets high enough or whatever. But, um, but yeah, that's, I mean, I'm, I'm doing fine. Very cool. Awesome. 
Good answers. You passed. All right. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I, can I bring up one more thing that I just think is sure. kind of important to, to bring? And I, I've been meaning to, I want to get this, this out there and I've been meaning to like write a blog post about it or something at some point. But the, the thing that I want to emphasize is that whenever you give to charity, you all, you always have to assume some amount of risk and you have to assume um, some amount of trust. And it's kind right. of like the same thing when you, in, when you invest in a company or invest in the stock market, like that's not a guaranteed success. Even like the most um, predictable companies like Coca-Cola or something like there's something could still happen. Right. And so um, whenever you, I, I encourage people to think of charity the same way um, in, in terms of, of doing your best with the resources that you have, you want to give to the most reliable place possible. You want to do your best, but you're not going to find a situation that's just foolproof. Like there are times when bad things happen, especially in these more impoverished parts of the world. I mean, the, the level of unpredictability mm -hmm. is a hundredfold in other parts of the world compared to a really stable society like ours. So it's, it's important that we, we, that when we give, we just have, that's kind of like baked into our understanding of what are the possible, the possible outcomes. Sure. So what makes donor see the more reliable, uh, sell yourself a little bit. What makes you more <laughs> reliable mm -hmm. yeah. and, uh, you know, trustworthy worthy than the others? Well, we're reliable in two ways. One, we're, we're reliable in that we provide documentation on how the money is actually being spent, like video docu documentation. Um, right. and, and we're, uh, we're working on even more tools to provide even more transparency, but like even like already there's, you're not going to get video documentation on your money if you give to, to a name brand charity. So, right. um, I, that's one thing. The other thing, and, and I think this is really, this is like made, to me, the biggest selling point for our reliability is our people who are, um, who are posting these projects, they're on the ground aid workers. They're people who understand the culture super, super well, live, have lived amongst the community and know that, like the pitfalls, the dangers of how money might get abused in that situation. And they also mm -hmm. know the success stories and they're able to apply, um, uh, apply the uh, aid relief as effectively as possible because mm -hmm. they understand the context really well. And that's, that's a really important thing that is not, um, as present in some of these like really large organizations that um, th you know, it's like uh, their headquarters are somewhere in Florida and they're making decisions like, you know, 3000 miles removed from the, where the actual need is happening. So I would say our closeness to the situation is one of our biggest uh, selling points in terms of reliability and credibility. Sure. Do you have, do you have people that are, uh, hesitant to work with you guys just because you are a small name and you're not the the big box corporations. Um, we're able to work with some some. We're that's not been as much of an issue. I think that the real issue is um, is the most charities are content just doing things the old way. They just sure. you know if they can get money and not tell people what they're doing with it, that's way <laughs> easier than what we do, where you have to report <laughs> on the donation. Right. <laughs> and so um that's the only that would be the only thing that kind of creates some friction with onboarding people um mm -hmm. is is getting them to commit to doing the video documentation. But as people who use our platform know, the people who do the video documentation are really passionate about it and do an excellent job. Um yeah. and, and we also like screen people to make sure we're not getting uh, people who come on board, we're not going to do that. So anyways, yeah. we're, yeah, here we go talking about <laughs> donor C. Uh, so anyways, I appreciate, I appreciate the airtime for this. Oh, absolutely. Um, again, love the company and your friend of the show. I'm happy to have you anytime. Hey, Dan Smots here. I'm taking a second to interrupt myself talking to talk about myself because, you know, I don't get paid a penny for the hours and hours that I put into creating this show for you guys in your greedy little ears. And I've got a family to feed. To make that happen, I run my own media business called Goulash Media. If you have a need in anything from video production to graphic design to audio production and beyond, you can get it all for a painfully fair price at Goulash Media. In video, I do weddings, music videos, commercials, pageants, plays, etc., etc., etc. For design, I do photo editing editing, album art, logos, branding, business cards, merchandise, you name it. For audio, I do engineering, production, editing, jingles, and, well, podcasts. So if you've got a media need of any kind, or if you'd just like to give a little something back and help keep my children fed, check out all the endless options at my website, goulashmedia.net. That's goulash, G-O-U-L-A-S-H, media.net, where we cater to the little guy with the big vision. <sighs> okay. Um, let's talk about, uh, well, we, we were trying to come up with a topic, a nice juicy topic to talk about, mm -hmm. like 
I don't pretend like things aren't what they are. We talked about this beforehand. Um, and like, let's talk about the state of America right now. Um, okay. Where do you see the state of America, like as far as our cushiness, as far as, you know, our privileges, as far as the things that we're arguing about? Like, how do you perceive that as somebody who's been to these other countries who is dealing with the poverty directly? Um, what's your take on our squabbles? Well, I want to be as sympathetic as possible, and I want to um, understand that not everyone has the same has had the same opportunity as me. So I, I had the the fortune to spend three years living in Malawi, Africa. Two of the three years I was there, it was ranked as the poorest country on the planet of the almost of the 200 countries on the planet. Malawi was at the very very bottom, um, and I interacted with people on a daily basis who were literally living off of a dollar a day, mm-hmm. and um, seeing that 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 seeing that reality and coming to grips with the fact that that reality is representative of about half of the population of the planet. Um, that's made it hard. That's made it hard for me to have sympathy for, um, some of the issues that we're facing in the U S and, um, I, 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 I'm, I've come, it's, you know, there was like a lot of bitterness that came along with that. When I, I lived in Malawi for three years and then I moved back to the States, I've been back in the States for about two years now. And I had to go through a, a period where I had to learn to like be okay with the the amount of discourse and the amount of entitlement and complaining and, and so forth. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm in a, I'm in a place now where I've accepted it. It's part of life and I understand like why it exists. It's just how it, you know, this is how the nature of things. Um, but I do hope that I can be one of the voices that brings awareness to some of the issues that are happening in other parts of the world, specifically the poorest half of the world. I think uh, that they don't get nearly as much attention as they, de- as they deserve. Mm-hmm. So you're saying that people on college campuses who are crying about hate speech and safe spaces. Well, oh, what are your what are your thoughts on that? <laughs> I mean, I think they're the, that they're soft, and I think that they they really could use a dose of reality. They could use a trip to some rural part of the world. Um, and yeah, I, it's I'm like I'm I feel like embarrassed for them. I I don't know what else to say. Like I I, I think that that they're just sorely mistaken. Right. Um, that they, they don't quite understand how good they have it. They just, I mean, like to, to, to attend a college in the U.S. is an opportunity that billions of people on the planet, billions of the people, billions of people on the planet would die for. They would love mm-hmm. the opportunity to just be at any college in the U.S. In fact, I know people, I know, I, for, I spent a year teaching math to high schoolers in Malawi, to Malawian high schoolers, and one of them, uh, I, his name was Mazadi, and I got the chance to mentor him, and I, and, um, he was able to uh, perform really well at the school and he was able to attend a college here in the States. And -hmm. for him, I I had a conversation, I have conversations with him every now and again and hearing him, I I asked him like, what do you think about people complaining? Um, And he's like, well, it's hard for me because like, I really want to be here in America. I really want to like work on my education here. Like I I worked really hard uh, up to this point and this is like a really meaningful experience for me. And it's just hard for me to see people take it for granted. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, it's tough. It's tough. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I hate to come across as judgmental in any way whatsoever. Cause like uh, on the one hand, I kind of like, I kind of sympathize with it, but at, at the same time, the, the amount of, um, any kind of like unsavoriness or maybe I don't come across as politically correct or whatever. I, I feel like some of that is necessary if we're going to truly right. grasp the realities of our planet, of the humans on our planet. <laughs> yeah. You can't always love people out of their stupid and you're a better person <laughs> than I am because, uh, because I, I have a lot harder time not judging these people. <laughs> but, mm-hmm. it's, and It's tough. It is so tough. I, I freely admit that. Yeah, and I, I mean, honestly, you and I were here talking through the internet on expensive microphones and grand equipment. Uh, we're not exempt from the judgment for, you know, any any of this stuff. Uh, there's still some sort of disconnect for myself, especially, and probably you even a, a bit, since you still live here and do your, mm-hmm. your fun things. Um, like, w- w- what cushy non-essentials do you have? Do you feel, like, guilty about any of that? Uh, to some extent... I- to some extent, but um, well, I'll, I'll put this is what I feel guilty about. This is really it because I the, yesterday I was I was uh, I was working out, I was lifting weights, and, and what I do is I a lot of times um, when I'm lifting I'll do a set and then I'll 
uh, check my phone in between sets while I'm resting or whatever, and then I'll <laughs> do another set. And so mm-hmm. um, I, there, during this, I forget what work that it was that I was doing, but um, I was texting with my friend in Malawi who works for me. His name is Prince. And um, Prince was telling me that he had recently visited a, a village in rural Malawi that didn't have clean water, and they were drinking from the same uh, water source that their livestock, their animals, defecate in. Um, and it, and I hear that stuff and it's like, I'm getting a text message about it. Right. Um, and Prince's phone had died when he went to go visit this village. So he wasn't able to take video of it, but we have tons of videos of this kind of thing, um, from like situations like that with Prince before. And, um, and I've, and I've been to these places like personally when I live there and it's just, it's just like, I'm working out in this like nice planet fitness with like plasma screen TVs (laughs) plastered against the wall and I'm using my smartphone device and I'm connected to the internet, like high speed internet, which half the planet doesn't have. And I'm just like thinking, I, that's, that's the part where it's like, I don't, I, I never, ever, ever want to get too comfortable. I never want to like forget about these things. I always right. want to remember them. And I, I want to remember that they exist. And I want to continue to work on them. And, I, and obviously like I work on donor every day and, and I'm able to be reminded more than most people, but still living in America, it's so easy to be detached. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I just think the the type of non-essential stuff that um, I don't, I mean, I go out, I think like the, the biggest thing that sometimes I question is like how much, you know, I go out to eat and uh, me and my fiance will go out and spend $50 or $60 on a meal. And I'll think like, ah, oh, you know, that's two months wages for some people. And right. that's, that's tough to swallow. Um, I'm, we're also, this is another thing that's, that's uh, my fiance and I, we're planning a wedding right now. Um, and we were, uh, given a, you know, a generous budget by her father and we're trying to figure out how to spend that in a way that's, um, if you need a videographer, let me know. I I actually, (laughs) I will let you know. Um, and, but yeah, we're trying to, we're trying to come up with like a good way to, to be responsible. Cause I, I think that's, that's some of the culture around spending money in weddings is, is pretty, um, far. I, I, we could get, I don't know if I want to get into weddings cause people hold those things so tightly, but. Oh, um, I, I could talk about weddings, and I'm a part of that business. Um, yeah, and yeah. the whole thing is totally <laughs> insane, insane. It's, it's yeah, it's quite. <laughs> I mean, I didn't realize. I you know, I'd always heard it was insane, but now that I'm actually doing yeah. it, I'm like, oh my goodness! I especially setting a like we do booths at some big uh, bridal expos and stuff like that, and seeing the amounts of things that people get and the amounts mm-hmm. that they spend on it. It's like it's a day you're not going to remember any of it. It's just mm-hmm. bizarre. <laughs> yeah. And so that's what we're trying to, uh, my fiance and I, she knows like, um, she, she's never been to Malawi. She's been to Africa before, but she knows like how deeply these things affect me. Mm-hmm. Um, and so she's, she's, she cares a lot about, uh, making sure that the wedding is like something I'm comfortable with, but also, you know, makes it special for her, special for the family, special for the guests and all that stuff. Sure. So we're trying to walk that line. Um, and it's like, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. So what, what is the line exactly? Like <laughs> what are, what is your ideal wedding? I know we're getting a little bit off topic here, but it's interesting to <laughs> it is, hear yeah. like where well, I, you take those things. Yeah, I am. Um, what I try and do is uh, we look at each component individually and we say like, what is, a, I don't want to get into like specific numbers. Cause I don't know if I should talk about that with like her dad paying for it and all that stuff. But uh, what we try, the way that we've been trying to make decisions is, okay, we'll talk about like the venue specifically or flowers or um, a photographer or something like that. And we'll look at these specific things and we'll say um, like, how much is like the market rate? Like how much are people charging for this stuff? And then how much do they charge for it? Like normally around here. And Mm -hmm. usually there's a huge discrepancy, right? Like a photographer on a wedding day is could be thousands of dollars. Whereas a photographer just for like any normal corporate event would be a, a right. fraction of that. And so, um, we look at those two things and we're like, all right, well, what's, what's like the, um, what's the way that we can, we can get close to the, uh, close to the, the normal price, but also have as much of the benefit of the wedding price as possible. And so we just look at basically it, it all centers around like getting the most bang for your buck, I think is how, sure. how, we, how we've been thinking about it. Um, so like not, allowing ourselves to be gouged by anything, not food, not, right. not anything. So, yeah. Absolutely. Now back a little bit more on topic um, <laughs> with, with some things that are happening uh, in the world right now, the whole immigration debacle. Uh, what is your take on that? Well, that's a good question. I, I want to, I, I don't want to come across like I'm an expert on immigration because I really sure. don't know much. Like about everybody it. else is doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, 
I, this is what I find. I find, I, okay, there's this, there's, uh, there's some company out there, some, something keeps popping up on my Instagram and it's these people wearing shirts that say, I stand with refugees. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it's very obvious to me that wearing a t-shirt doesn't mean you stand with refugees. Like <laughs> if you want to stand with refugees, like go to the other side of the world, go stand with refugees and actually stand with them, like actually feed them, sacrifice, like take your personal money and right. sacrificially give it to them in a way that's going to help them. Um, like that's standing with refugees, but just like going on TV or writing a blog post or expressing your anger online um, or being mad or whatever, like that's not necessarily doing anything. Uh, that's mm-hmm. not necessarily in it. In fact, um, what, what, what's really happening is it's making, and I think that this problem extends way beyond the immigration uh, situation, but what's happening is people are having a hard time um, just talking about anything. Like it's ha- hard to have a helpful conversation about basically anything. So like the Absolutely. immigration stuff, like I don't know exactly where I stand on it and I, I really am like not that educated on it, but I know that there's people on both sides who are extremely passionate and angry and they just make, they shout so loudly that it makes <laughs> reasonable conversation completely impossible, at least in any kind of mainstream setting. Absolutely. I totally agree. What, how do you feel about uh, like borders in general? Are you a pro borders guy or not? Uh, that's a good question. I, I don't, I don't have like feelings about it necessarily. I, I think that um, I, I guess like I'm way more concerned with like my personal behavior. Like I cared about the poor when I was in college and I wanted to do something about it. So I right. moved to Malawi for three years and then I, I came back here and I'm like not taking a salary and I started this organization that's like helping the poor. And so right. to me, if I, I care about something, I will like personally sacrifice so I can, so I can like help that cause. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, like trying to get the government to do something or trying to get people to think the government should be a certain way. I, I, I think that these things are like we get ca- caught up too much in talking about what other people should be doing, including the government. How, what should the mm-hmm. government be doing? What should the other side be doing? What should blah, blah, blah. I think like if if possible, just think about like, what can I be doing? If you care about if you right. care about borders or if you care about immigrate, whatever it is that you care about, what can you personally do about it? I think that that's for some reason that conversation is absent from public discourse and i think it's so bizarre just like people should just do stuff on their own just do stuff on your own i think people should just (laughs) personally like i remember i'll I'll get into uh there's um there's another podcast called the the liturgists and it's like these Mm -hmm. you know them they're they're they're, i like some of their stuff i don't like some of their other stuff i remember one time they were complaining because the government wasn't like providing clean water for people in uh some parts of the world and i was like you can go provide like you can go do it yourself (laughs) You don't have to wait for the government yep. to do it. You can yep. personally give your own money. You can personally like, you know, work really hard, save up money and give it and pr- build wells in different places. Like, like, yeah, sure. It's sad that, that people don't have clean water. And I am obviously one of the biggest advocates of it, but you like everyone, if, if you're complaining about something, you're, you're spending time that you could otherwise be spending solving that problem. <laughs> yeah. It's really easy to use the sympathy card to convince other people to do the thing that you think needs to be done. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And it doesn't, work. It's not persuasive. What, no. To me, what I found in my personal, um, in my personal efforts with these things is the most persuasive thing is, is me doing my things myself. Yeah. Like when people see that I'm like the real deal and they see that like how much effort and passion I put into what I care about, which is alleviating extreme poverty. When they see right. that they like hop on board alongside with me for the same mission, but like yeah. shouting at people or like trying to make people feel guilty because you have these images or these stories or whatever, <laughs> it doesn't work most of the time. Yeah. In fact, you, I'm not sure it works at all. In fact, it could be kind of productive. <laughs> oh, you mean like uh, putting uh, commercials on TV with uh, sad children in other countries and saying a quarter a month or whatever? And there's uh, you're you're <laughs> standing things, there yeah. in a suit while they're like starving next to you, and you're like, "Look at this kid. You should so help this kid." That's a great way to get money, <laughs> and and charities have done an excellent job of getting money for that. But then the question is, like, are the kids in the commercials actually being helped? Right. <laughs> like, do we know? We don't know. We don't know what's going on with, with uh, all right. With the Pack donations. it up, guys. Let's move on to the next village. <laughs> yeah, we we got lots of good footage here today. Yep. <laughs> yep. And there, I mean, there's nothing those kids can do to not be a part of that either. They, they there's no laws for like mm-hmm. that that are saying that you can't use their image to promote your business, whether right. or not they're actually being helped. Yeah, and I think 
if you go to these parts of the world, I don't think they don't care. That, that's like privacy and stuff like that. That's totally a first world concern. Right. They don't care about people taking care of your Well, picture. when you're shitting in the street, you probably don't care too much about privacy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for real. Yeah, that's, I mean, <laughs> one way of putting it for sure. So I think like um, the, the things that they care about are like, okay, I want to like, where will my next meal come from? Like mm-hmm. they really care about that. Or will, will I ever, ever be able to be in a position where I could have a stable job? Because that would be a right. dream come true if I could just have a stable job where I make a hundred bucks a month. They would, that's a dream come true for lots of people on this planet. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I think that that's the type of stuff that they care about. And, and the, the people who are like swinging in, taking quick videos and moving on with their lives and not reporting on what, how they're spending money. It, yeah. I, we could talk about that for a while. Sure. Absolutely. And another plug for the company. Uh, I, one, I don't remember which one, but one of the, the pledges that I gave to, uh, they had, the kids like write everybody's names on signs and hold them up and say, thank you. Like Mm -hmm. that's, that's not just a swing in and get video thing. That's like your name is being told to these people and they're personally thanking you for the the generous donation. That was almost nothing that you gave them from your pocket, but is Mm -hmm. the world to them. Life changing. Yeah. And what I'll say is that in a lot of cases, that's like, like, yeah, that piece of paper with the names that they're holding, Mm -hmm. that's like, these are the people who like saved my life or these are the people who gave me my hearing back or these are the people who let me go to school you know for them it's like this deeply meaningful thing and they they care about the people on on that sheet of paper and often it's like they'll pray for you they 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 want to you know they it was that you're a very meaningful person in their lives and so um mm-hmm. that's often the case absolutely so I know you got to get going here pretty quick, but uh, tell everybody, you've got some new developments with the company, uh, new opportunities that people can take uh, part in. Um, tell mm-hmm. everybody what's going on. Yeah. So uh, DonorC is a for-profit organization, a for-profit where the CEO makes no money. And um, hopefully if I, if I can manage it, I'd like that to keep it that way. But um, yeah, it's a, it's a company where uh, we're a for-profit company and we have seven different reasons why we do that, but it basically centers around um, making it for-profit instead of non-profit allowed us to spend a lot less money trying to keep up with um, unproductive, ineffective government regulations. Sure. Um, and so, but we still are able to offer tax deduction in some settings by using other people's nonprofits. Okay. So with that said, um, we're a, a for-profit company and we are raising a round of investment on a site called WeFunder. And so if people believe what we're doing and, and they want to support us and, and you can support us either because you think we're going to be really big and, uh, and you can, um, you can invest in a way where your money will, will be worth more someday, or you, you can, uh, support us in a way where you just, you, you like our mission and, and you want to show support in that way, you can go to wefunder.com slash donorcy and we're raising funds there to, um, to make our platform better and to uh, continue our mission of helping. Ex- uh, well, really our mission is alleviating extreme poverty by meaningfully con- connecting people um, in the first world. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, all fascinating stuff, man. Um, really appreciate you coming on as always. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, tell everybody, it, well, if you have any final thoughts, feel free to share them. Any any final stories or anything um, that's come out uh, or that you've witnessed since last time? Um, here's what I'll say for my final thoughts. I think that uh, people really underestimate the meaningfulness that can be found in in sacrificially doing good for others. Mm-hmm. And when I say sac, I mean like we talked. So this is what I wanted to get at when we were talking about the wedding earlier. Um, the it's really the way it's like if you're wondering when is enough to give, like when is my giving an, enough? I, the answer is when, when you feel it, when you feel like you've, you've had to sacrifice something in order to uh, mm-hmm. make an impact in someone else's life. That's usually when um, you feel like you've done enough. Uh, and so I, I would say to, to anyone who's listening, I highly encourage you to think about sacrificially serving someone else sometime soon. It doesn't have to be on donor C. It doesn't even have to be with third world issues. It can be with something that's more meaningful or pur- purposeful to you, but there's a lot of meaning and value to be found in that. And, right. um, and I, I highly encourage people to explore that some more because if, if you're in a place where you're bitter about your job or you're bitter about any number of things, um, well, there, there's a better story that awaits you. And, and that story is making a difference in someone else's life. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. As I always say, you're not ever going to look back on the sacrifice that you made in helping somebody else. And you're never going to look back on that and regret it. You're never going to be like, ah, Mm -mm. darn it. I I could have used that $150 to buy a new TV. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I, I, I completely agree with that. And I always like to, I, that's like one of the things I was, I actually just posted on Instagram about this this morning. I, if you could spend today thinking, how could I spend today in such a way that I won't regret it in 20 years? Mm -hmm. um, often the way to do that is by serving someone else, by doing things for others. It, it's, it's, a, it's, it's just a nice thing to do and it's, it's fun and, um, and, and almost like selfishly, like you, you get a lot out of it yourself. Right. So. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's the nature of it. Right. Yeah, I, I, I agree 100%. On all points, you win. Um, <laughs> now, <laughs> tell everybody where they can find out more about you, Donor C, uh, your videos, all the stuff that you've got going on, man. Sure. So Donor C is just DonorC.com. Uh, and then we have the app and we'll get the iPhone app fixed soon. Um, we also are on Twitter and Instagram and all that stuff. I also have a personal... I also have like a, a personal Facebook page. Um, so it's Greg Lyer, CEO of DonorCy, and a personal Twitter, uh, which is at Greg Lyer. And that's where I talk. So I, I think your listeners might be interested in following me on, on that stuff as opposed to the DonorCy profile, um, just because that's like where I talk more about the some of the issues we talked about on this podcast, like extreme poverty and stuff. Whereas the DonorCy stuff is more, the DonorCy social media accounts are more related to like the stories that are happening on our platform and stuff. Um, sure. so it, it depends on, on what, what you prefer, but they're, they're kind of two different things. Absolutely. Well, awesome, man. I've said it a couple times already, but you're always welcome here and thank you so much for coming on. It's been a pleasure, man. It, thank you so much. Thanks, Dan. Dun, 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 dun. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around to the end. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Gret as much as I did. I love these conversations. I know I say that at the end of every episode, but I really enjoyed doing this stuff for you guys and for myself. I, I wouldn't even say necessarily I'm doing it for you because uh, this is a uh, something that makes no sense. I, I'm not qualified to do this. I'm not qualified to talk to these people. I'm a, I'm a guy with a mic, and that, that's my qualification. You guys are what is making me uh, more qualified to do this by joining the Downers Club and just by listening for free. Um, I, I really appreciate you guys' support, and I don't understand why you're enjoying the show as much as you do. I hope that I'm doing my very best to make it worthwhile for you to keep coming back and telling people about the show. I genuinely appreciate you, every single one of you. And if you'd like to support the show financially, you can do so by going to patreon.com forward slash the system is down and join the Downers Club for as little as $5 a month. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, the question of the day was, is there a certain level in your life where you have too much or you have enough or you should feel guilty for having things, having as much as you do? As Americans, we have way more than uh, certain countries probably, us individually. It's insane the amount of comfort that we have. Um, I don't know. I don't necessarily think that you should feel guilty, but I'm curious to hear you guys' opinions. So if you'd like to share your opinion, go join the System is Down forum for absolutely free. You can go to Facebook and just type in the System is Down forum, or you can go to tsidpod.com forward slash forum. And that is the place where a whole bunch of weirdos such as you and I and everybody else uh, listening to this show the person who told you about it, uh, we're all in there having these conversations, these uncomfortable conversations about the weird things in life, the stranger sides of life, the fringe news, the fringe media, um, and diagnosing things, and just having all of these weird dialogues and doing so in a very civil manner. We are the anti-Facebook that exists within Facebook. We're not screaming at each other or calling people names. And we have Democrats, Republicans, Libertarians, you name it in there. We have atheists and Christians and Jews and all sorts of people in there. We have conspiracy-minded people and people who think conspiracy-minded people are crazy. We have every kind of person from every kind of walk of life in there conversing in civil manners. So go get in there, uh, tsidpod.com forward slash forum. And if you need a link to follow, you can find all the links that I'm referencing in the show description in the show notes. And you can find links to Donor C and everything else there check that stuff out and this week while you're wasting time on facebook and twitter just go ahead and like share subscribe the system is down facebook twitter youtube all that stuff uh check it out we've got a lot of big stuff coming up very very soon we're working on live streaming and broadcasting and a whole bunch of fun stuff 
So keep your eyes and ears open, and as always, go out and talk to somebody civilly about hard topics. The best thing that you can do to change the world is to listen to somebody else. Know what you believe and listen to somebody else. I know I've said it a lot, but I don't feel like you're doing it because the world uh, it doesn't seem to be changing. Let's get out there and do it for real. Let's change the world together. One uncomfortable conversation at a time. Um, but you guys, I appreciate you more than I could possibly say. I love you, and I thank you so much for listening to the show and supporting the show and spreading the word. Please continue to do so, and I will continue to pour my all into it and make it the best thing that I possibly can for you. If you do all that stuff, you know it. I'll be back here first thing next Monday morning with some uncomfortable conversations for you. Until then, ladies, gentlemen, and everything in between, question everything and stay uncomfortable. Thanks. This has been a Goulash Media production. Goulashmedia.net. This concludes our broadcast day. Click.